So I did a video about these thin little patch cords and they're pretty novel and the video is pretty popular and I like them. And of course I said, I don't know electrically enough about these. So an interview was put together uh, with Dan from Ideal Networks who does know a whole lot about cabling standards. And that's a great interview uh, and it will go way more in depth about cabling standards than I'm gonna get today. Uh, it was enlightening hearing from him. Uh, they also, from Ideal Networks, they sent me this. This is the Ideal Networks PoE Pro. And this is a really slick little device that I wanted to review and talk about PoE testing. So the person I did the interview was uh, part of the company that designed this. And so this is a really neat device that I wanted to show how it loads these. And that's why he sent it to us so we could do a demonstration with it and talk about it. And I'm just like, this is really cool. This is definitely something that's uh, now added to our uh, toolkit for our technicians. I don't even playing with it for a couple days now, but I'm pretty excited about it. But first, we're gonna go crazy here and do something not everyone does. We're gonna read the manual. Okay, we're not gonna read the whole manual. We're gonna cover a couple topics in here though, as I wanted to show off how this system works and talk about the PoE standards it tests. And I'm not gonna cover everything in detail. It does take a nine volt battery and I'll cover the physical parts of it and what comes with it in a second here. But in the manual, they got, you know, well-documented. It shows some of the accessories you can get, which are cool. It does come with the uh, dual port remote units and then you can get more of them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the PoE testing is what's really neat. So it does some of the other testing, which we'll cover for cable length and shorted pins. And that's less exciting. Uh, but the PoE doesn't just test the PoE. First, when we plug in PoE, it's gonna be able to test the PoE. It's gonna be able to test the ethernet speed. Then this is where things get cool. It identifies the different types of PoE, AF, AT, BT, uh, maximum wattage, the pass or fail, we'll get to that in a second, the pins that are carrying it and the class of PoE and number of pairs supplying PoE voltage. Method of operation, uh, the PoE Pro operates by detecting pulses from PoE power source equipment. These pulses advertise the PSE class, which determine the amount of maximum power it can supply. So if you're not familiar with active PoE or how a system works, like the one behind me here that we're gonna be showing with this Unify PoE switch, that it allows for uh, different classes to be identified. And maybe you don't have it in your head right away, because I know I don't always, uh, but there are several different types of PoE and different classes of PoE determining on a voltage. So when this does the PoE testing, it's not just testing for whether or not the wattage comes out. It identifies the class and passes or fails whether or not it provides voltage as the class it identified. So that's actually really nice. That way it isn't just, hey, we got voltage on here. No, if you have a class of device, it tells you whether or not the class that it identified itself as is putting out the voltage it's supposed to. And that's an important feature. And I like the fact that it gives you a pass or fail based on that. So it's not like just, just power coming out of it. It says I'm a class this, and this is the wattage that class should provide. So it passes or fails whether or not that wattage was provided. And we're gonna go uh, show a couple tests on that. Now, one other thing it does is an extended load test. To activate the extended power test by holding the network button for three seconds until a beep is heard, this feature will draw up to 90 watts of power and can be activated once a PoE measurement has been made. Starting with the power detecting during the automatic PoE test, the PoE Pro will increment the power demand in approximately five watt steps until the PSE powers down or 90 watts is reached. Each power step will be played for half a second. Now what that's telling us is this will load test it. And that's actually really a neat feature because there's voltage and then there's voltage under load. And voltage under load is what happens when I plug something in. It's not just providing some weak amount to go and, hey, here's your voltage you asked for. It's what it looks like when you load it up based on the class, based on that pull. Now, I don't have a 90 watt PoE system to do a test with, but one of the things it said it can do is if you test 90 watts, it will go all the way up to that high in here but it will eventually cause this to get warm. Don't worry, it's got safety protection there. So uh, I tried testing on this 30 watt one we have here quite a few times and was unable to uh, overload this, but apparently it will get warm, won't damage the unit at all. It just lets you know that it's uh, hit like a thermal limit and will blink on the screen letting you know, wait for it to cool down and it will probably get slightly warm to the touch, but doing 30 watts never even come close to that. It never even got warm at all. But I thought that was kind of cool. It does have safety protection built in because when you're drawing, well, 90 watts, that means you have to dissipate the 90 watts and that's gonna come in the form of heat. Now that we've played enough with the manual, let's go through the physical layer, show you what this comes with and get it unboxed and actually do some testing with it. 
So as sent to us, it did come in this cool little retail box, uh, which is nice. It's It looks pretty. And it comes with this handy dandy case with uh, this being rubberized and embossed. So uh, this is not a sticker. It isn't gonna scratch off. That's on there really well. And we'll unzip it. Inside we find this. There was a nine volt battery in here, but we already put it in. Uh, it is a Phillips head to get that out. So it's not gonna fall out on you. Very ruggedized, uh, rubber grippy. It's not gonna fall out of my hand. Uh, but it will, if it gets used in the field, eventually it will look worse than this, like all of our tools. Uh, and I'll leave a link to our tried and tested tools video. That is a thing um, where we've gone over how rough we are sometimes on tools because not because we want to be, but these are used out in the field a lot and you want things that'll survive. But uh, everything about it feels really tough, tight. It's like I said, grippy, shouldn't fall out of your hand, but you know, ladders, things. It does have, Different uh, cables in here, a couple uh, RJ11 for phone, a couple RJ45, uh, two of these, two of these, and a pair of these, the crimp-ons. And uh, these are handy with the alligator clips because this does have a tone generator built into it. So that's actually kind of nice that they have that in there. So you can just alligator clip onto that. And if you've done like old 66 block work and stuff like that, it is handy having those uh, alligator clips. I still run into it occasionally. Now the device itself comes with one of these. So this is the main one that comes with it and inserts into it. it, snaps in. It's actually pretty tight in there. So this isn't gonna just fall out and get lost on you. It is labeled with a number one. They do sell accessory kits so you can get like two, plus, two, three, four, five and do different network tests. And it also covers RG45, RG11 and uh, testing, I guess this would be the coax tester. Yeah, coax testing. Anyways, we never do coax testing, so that's not gonna be covered today. Um, if you're into coax testing, it does have that on there. We just never see it anymore. It's kind of kind of gone. So turn the device on. And actually, I'm gonna start with this tiny little cable here. So I'll grab this cable. We'll grab the little end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We know this cable passed. So tiny little cable, it recognizes device one and a pass. Now this is something that I haven't seen. I know there's other cable testers out there that do this, but this is novel that they have this included. Please note that they included shielded RJ45s. And if you use a shielded RJ45, one, two, three, four, five, six, and an S for shield. So it identifies the shielding on there, which is definitely really cool. So we have that. Now it also can do cable length. So I'm gonna grab a and I put an end on this for convenience, but obviously you can do it with the crimpers uh, and just end on there. But let's see how long this cable is. It's actually into a box and it measures 583. I had to spin the box around over here. Uh, according to the box and the label on this box, there is 590 feet of cable on there. So I'm not sure who's right, Corey, who wrote that on the box or this device here, but you can take and adjust this. There is an option in here if you have a known length of cable and you can adjust it based on that known length to get it fine tuned. Speaking of which, these are 100 foot bundles as labeled um, that we had laying around. There's some cheap uh, generic cable that came with something. I don't know what, but let's plug them into this real quick. And we got 99.5. So if this generic unlabeled cable is accurate uh, and, in, and in being 100 foot in length, it thinks it's 99.5 feet in length. So I'm gonna say the cable length is fairly accurate. Now this uh, tool for doing that also helps find breaks and shorts and things like that. And the same thing happens, it will tell you length to short, it has that option as well. Let's jump out of that. Let's jump into the POE testing part of that. That's actually what's gonna be much more interesting. We're gonna plug into here. I have this heavy gauge Cat6 shielded, high quality cable, properly crimped. Plug it into port eight, right there. All right, now we're gonna watch it work its magic. 54 volts, 29.9 watts. The check mark means based on the class, which is class four, it is providing the pro proper voltage. So we'll go ahead and hold the button in for the network for a few seconds. Let's for a beep. Now we're going to load test that. 
it's going to walk through the wattage like it said in the manual. 54 volt still. 30.1 watts at 52 volts. So now we know it's not only claiming to do it, it's actually giving us the 52 at 30.1. So once again, it's passing and it loaded up to the proper voltage, but things can cause problems. Now I'm gonna go back to this cable that I have here that is really long, 500 something. Let's measure that again. I think it was 580 something feet, which is further than you're supposed to run PoE. So we'll plug this in real quick, 584. And we're going to plug in this cable to the PoE and grab the other end of it. So that's plugged in there. All right, so I have my uh, mono price cable. This is that uh, one we just tested that's like 580 odd feet of cable. More than you're supposed to be running these for, but uh, let's see how it works. And let's PoE load test after going through all this cable. In case you're wondering what no pull means, it kind of means the box fell and kind of got tangled inside. So let's do a test. Fifty-three volts, so we lost a volt going five hundred feet, and we lost a little bit of wattage. So now it's forty-three. He's going through the test right now. Twenty-eight point four watts, forty-three volts. All right. So now that it's under load, we know what's happening. So we are only able to get a maximum of forty-three volts at the end of this cable and twenty-eight watts. And now this is why testing under load is important. Now this is the max load. This is not what the uh, Unify device I'm going to plug into the end here and test works with. I'll grab this right here. This is just your standard uh, Unify access point. It's a Unify HD and we can see it working. Now, one of the things I want to point out when you're using a, just a standard HD, this thing doesn't go much over, I think it's like 10, 12 watts. So this cable, despite being too long, despite being uh, exceeding some of the length, we talked about this in the video that me and Dan did that some cables can go a little over length, but you'll see that it works. It's uh, hard to see in this lighting, but you can see it's lighting up. Yep, it's lighting up and adopted, worked fine uh, even with that. But this is that important part because someone asked if this does inline testing, it does not, but it does full load testing. So if this passes at a full load at a certain cable length, it should certainly pass with a device that doesn't require as much load in theory. Um, but this is another you know tool to keep in there for some of the troubleshooting. Now, the next question that's gonna come up is what about these little guys. And that's actually why I have these out. So we're going to go and uh, shuffle around and plug these in because what is the voltage loss of putting this in there? All right, now we're going to test these tiny little uh, 32 gauge cables that are not actually certified. 28 gauge is as high as you want to go. Refer back to a long discussion me and Dan had about cabling standards. I'll link that video below, as I said. And here's a standard uh, duty cat 5e cable. So we're gonna test that one first. Let's see what kind of wattage and voltage we get out of this. 54 volts as expected. 29.9 watts, 51 volts. All right, so there's slight variation within tolerance. Got the little check mark definitely passed. What happens? I'm gonna drop that and we're gonna switch to the 32 gauge cable. And granted, we're only dealing with 30 watts here, so it's not dangerous. This can handle 30 watts. 54, 30 watts, 51 volts, 30 watts. Oddly, just ever so slightly better at 29 to 30. So this is actually kind of confusing. Now, the point I'm kind of making is, one, this cable can handle it. Also, we're probably talking more about using these cables as patch cables than something this long. But even this long, what's happening is, and I wanted to bring this up, this is not thin enough to really cause at the wattage we're talking about any major issues apparently. I'm not an electrical engineer by trade, but just letting you know that these cables do seem to work as a PoE patch. This has no problem putting them under load and they didn't melt in my hand at 30 watts. They don't even feel warm in any measure. But when you're talking about the last few inches of the cable in here, you're only having a loss or any loss at all on this last small piece of cable. Obviously we ran these cables at length and we had a really, really long one. Well, you would get some different results because over time, it's going to, or over distance, I should say not time, but over distance, you're going to have more of a problem versus one inch right here 
it's like I said, getting the full 29.951 volts, no problems there. Seems to be a little variance, variance each time I test it. So you would probably run in the wall or wherever it's running a really long, let's say this is a 100 foot cable as measured. And we plug this in here. And then we'll plug, uh, well, why not patch it twice? So we're coming out at thin wire going into standard, some cheap wire, but it works. Uh, it will provide the voltage. And then going out of here, we get 53 volts, 29.6 watts, 43 volts because of the distance, 29.6 watts. But if we change this out, we put this cable back in, the heavier gauge cable to the heavier gauge cable to the heavier gauge cable all the way across. Let's see what it does when it runs the test now. 53 is doing the test. 28.7, 43. So this last little distance, uh, the patching distance, and obviously there's to the wall patch as well, uh, doesn't make a massive difference. So using these thin cables uh, does not seem to be problematic. I wish I had a 90 watt device to test these on to you know see where their limits are, but I imagine once you get up to the higher wattage, okay, maybe that's a consideration, but for running something that's lower wattage, like an access point, it doesn't really seem to be much of a problem, but it's not that much you know, savings just to even go, these are 32 gauge to go with, like I had mentioned, the 28 gauge, which are also much thinner than this and do look really nice and have better ratings for candling power. If you're future thinking going, well, yeah, we got 30 watts today, but you know, we plan to step it up with a higher end PTZ camera that's gonna need full 90 watts for all the uh, night vision and everything on there. Now, the last thing I'll cover with this, it does have, like I said, a tone generator in it. Uh, it does have a couple options for finding split pairs. It also has options for uh, doing the tone on different pins, which I thought was kind of novel that it could do that. Let me walk you through it real quick. One of the other things, and like I said, this is all in the manual. You can specifically test things on different pins like this versus all the pins. You can do what they call split testing. That turns on split testing, turns it on and off. So it has that, go back over and put this on, put on all of them, and then for tone generating. This is something else I thought was just kind of neat, the fact that the tone generator, we'll put a toner and listener in there here. We got a couple different options on it. And then you walk through. So this is on all pins, and this is only on certain pins. And I'm not moving a tone generator, or not moving a tone probe, by moving it to different pins. I thought that was just kind of a neat feature, being able to pick which pins the tones come out on. And to turn off tone mode, just hold the button and it does a series of long presses. We've just definitely had a lot of fun testing it. I will show as a final test, it will do a PoE device that's not active like this. So we have just a passive brick and we're gonna plug it in there and show what it does with a passive brick. And it understands the voltage on here. It understands the wattage on here, but that's it. It's not gonna tell you uh, much else about it because it can't because these are not active. So it's not identifying uh, different options, but it does at least tell you what the brick is working. So if you have situations where you're using a PoE brick, that is definitely something it can still test. Uh, overall, I do like this tester. Um, the It works really well. We do have a couple of these thin cables and uh, let's do one more thin cable test while I'm talking here, but it, it works great. I have had no problems with uh, all the playing we've been doing with it for the last few days. Uh, putting it to the test. We've, you know, taken it, we took it on one job site uh, and tested each of the cables. It will work with these. These are 20 foot thin cables. And we're gonna PoE this one in, show you what happens, but ah, no problem working with these two. And we're gonna do the PoE load test on the thin cable. And once again, same result, but it works. It works with all these. Like I said, it's kind of fun to play with this um, and understand that same wattage is coming out. Oh, someone asked me if these will carry wattage. I guess I have one here so I can show you real quick. Yes, these uh, thin ones have these other flat ones, not thin. These are the flat cables. So I guess they're thin too, but same results uh, comes up. Test 53 there. 
same wattage coming out of them. So yes, you can take flat cables and run 30 watts through them as well. I, I do like these flat cables, so they're pretty, uh, they're pretty cool. And this is uh, 30 foot or 20, I, this is an odd length cable. I don't, I think it's actually might be a 25 footer, but it measures at 27. Um, I haven't measured it to see how accurate that is. It is, but I'm pretty amazed that it can measure a flat cable because it doesn't have the same twists in it. Obviously they, they cross over each other in a different way because they're laid out flat. So anyways, um, they, this is a new device. I have not seen it, but you can buy it directly from ideal. I have not seen it on like Amazon or any of the other places, but I imagine a few suppliers, uh, the big suppliers have it. So I don't have any special offer or link from it. This unit was sent to us for review. Uh, and they said we can keep it which is exciting why it's going to go in there. So I'm uh, excited about that, uh, that I get to keep it. That's, uh, I don't always get to keep everything we review. Sometimes stuff has to get sent back, but this one's definitely uh, added to our toolkit and uh, one we want to test POE. So I'll probably be buying more of these in the future, but uh, great device. If you share your thoughts and comments below, and like I said, you can get this right from ideal. I have no offer codes or affiliates for where to get this thing. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.